Um, I was wondering if you could tell me what kind of themes you like to invest in. Yes, so um, I'm a life science investor. And so my focus is basically on patients with severe or unmet medical conditions. I, I was interested when I read your profile because I noticed that you um, also have some interest in AIDS. Um, I do. Um, and I w did work for many years ago, years ago in the crisis in um, Melbourne, um, yeah. in the AIDS crisis, and um, uh, worked with... I was a therapist in those days and worked one-to-one -one with men that were dying, so I have a great sort of um, respect and um, uh, any help in that area, I think, is fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that was the, you know, the, the area that really got me focused on research and on innovation. Oh. When I was in medical school, AIDS, the AIDS virus, HIV, was not defined. We were just, it was in the, uh, the late 70s, and we were seeing a lot of men, women, um, mm. immigrants who were coming over with bizarre diseases and things that we hadn't seen for years. Some of the, the opportunistic, opportunistic yeah. infections, and we were seeing a lot of tuberculosis. And, um, and I became interested in medical school and the rest of my career has basically been focused on that passion oh, which which um, started out with um, that experience in medical school and then uh, ultimately doing a immunology and infectious disease fellowship at the National Institutes of Health with oh, Tony Fauci and a lot of the basic researchers who were identified the HIV virus and then um, the first therapies wow. for HIV. Wow. So, so messages follow your passion yes. if you really you know, f see something where there's a, a need and where you think you have the talent to contribute, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good work. I'm so glad to Thank know you. that you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. um, what do you look for in women entrepreneurs and startups that indicate interest to you in investing in their businesses? Well, um, I, I, what I look for is a great entrepreneur, right. and I don't really distinguish men or women. Right. Um, I, I think that at the end of the day, when you really focus on who to back, um, first the passion piece has to be there. Okay. And a lot of times women are more open about their passion, and that's a good thing, because mm -hmm. you really know what is motivating them. Yeah. Um, it at the, the you need to have the the technical expertise as an entrepreneur um, in order for us to be interested in, in backing that person. Mm -hmm. um, the best CEOs and entrepreneurs in general are people who really have an area that they are well trained in and have a unique idea and an insight. Um, and if they can communicate that and they've got a good business, a market, we don't really take market risk here. So mm -hmm. there has to be a clear articulation of what the opportunity is. Right. If those elements come together, then usually it's a backable Great. entrepreneur. Great. That's really clear. Thank you for that. Advice for pitching for venture is often correlated with dating. What sort of chemistry makes for a good match and is it success for both entrepreneur and venture capitalists? Because obviously you're going to be working together for a, a little while at least. Yeah, and on the uh, side that I invest in, on the biotech side, it's years. Right. Right. Okay. So we, yeah. you have to assume when you're when you're investing or when we are investing in a yes. company that we may be married to that company and that investment for five to ten years. Right. And so chemistry does matter. It yeah. really does. And yeah. what I look for is back to the passion component, okay. expertise. I, I really am attracted to people who are uh, deep technical experts okay. and also know what they don't know. The hardest thing for us as venture capitalists is if we have an entrepreneur who may be passionate, may have a good idea, but they're not aware of their gaps in knowledge yeah. or their skill set yeah. and are not comfortable articulating that, very difficult to back someone like that right. because you know you need complete transparency. Yes. You need to know that people are honest and open and 
actually the most important characteristic when you're thinking about working with somebody moving forward is that they are very comfortable communicating bad news very quickly. Good. And you find that out when yes. you're meeting people and you go through our process takes months, right. sometimes a year before right. we'll invest in a company. You right. get to know people and things never go according to plan. It's yes. the ones who are willing to tell you that and be a little vulnerable that end up right. being people we're really comfortable working with. Right, okay, so so part of your process is what I'm hearing, it actually weeds out um, the people that you you think that you'd be able to work with and the people that you wouldn't be. A absolutely, yeah. okay. absolutely. And that's yeah. sort of good that it's built into the process in a way. <laughs> it certainly is, <laughs> for both sides. Yes, exactly, exactly. Oh yes, um, both, both need to know that that's yes. going to work for them, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. In your experience, are there many women entrepreneurs that are unsuccessful in sourcing venture? We already know that the percentages of women who are successful are very low. I think 8 to 10% women um, sourcing venture actually achieve it. Um, do yeah. you, do you, are you aware of the lack of success? <laughs> So, um, I, I don't know those statistics for okay. women versus men, Okay. but what I do know is that the um, ability to succeed or the, the success rate is extremely low for everyone. Okay. It's just a very risky business. It's mm -hmm. called venture capital for a reason. Yes. And um, so you have to have risk tolerance to be in this business yes. for sure. Yes. Um, but I, I think that the elements that usually lead to failure are not gender based. They're huh. more based on really, I mean, a couple of areas. One is know your market and go for technology or for solutions that address a unique market need. Right. And the second is technical success. And in the biotech business, we are, have a very low, low probability of success. Right. It is what it is. So the way to address that is to try and diversify and have a portfolio of opportunities. Right. As opposed okay. to a single shot on goal. Right. Those single shots on goal are very risky in any business yes, right, that yes. succeeds. It's often not the first idea or the first try, exactly. but it's the persistence and it's, you know, and it's having a good idea and a clear market where you can then you know, iterate a few times mm -hmm. and eventually you'll succeed. So what I'm hearing is that, that the creativity and the flexibility are, are sort of quite high up there as, as values for an entrepreneur. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, if you're not, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, actually. Yeah. <laughs> what can women entrepreneurs or startups do to increase their chances in sourcing venture? And you've so, you have actually covered that. Is there anything else you can think of that would help women? Um, you haven't identified any um, failings or difficulties that women have, but some people have fed back to me that, you know, women's innate... Um, Strengths in some areas can can become like a weakness when they're sourcing venture. Yeah. Um, things like lack of confidence and um, um, uh, not so assertive, um, and possibly not so risk orientated. All these things that sometimes are generalised that women don't have. So I'm just wondering if you would have any advice or any sort of points that you know you think would help. Women yeah. Generally. So so let's talk specific um, uh, general and yep. then some specific right. areas. So um, on the general side, some of the viewers of this video may be a skier or some kind of athlete. Yes. And I often find it's easier if you can relate to something. So I yes. lo I love to ski and I am a risk taker. I'll go for you know the the steep. Um, okay runs every time. That's why Fantastic. I'm a venture capitalist. But some women aren't comfortable with that. <laughs> yes. So uh, I would say the way to think about it, if mm -hmm. you want to ski successfully, you have to have a couple things. One is the conditions have to be right. Right. If you go out in a white out, it doesn't matter how yes. <laughs> how uh, good a skier you are. If you can't see, you know, mm. more than ten feet in front of you, you forget it. Yeah. So make sure you understand the environment around you and that the conditions are right. Okay. The second is you have to have the right equipment, 
and um, you know if you if you have skis that are you know a decade old and really long instead of short these days yeah. or your boots don't fit you properly you're not going to ski well mm -hmm. so make sure when you're putting together a business plan or you have an idea that you have all of the right equipment well what does that mean that means you know clear understanding of the market the technical risks and the team that you need around you to succeed yeah. Yeah. And then the third thing is, um, if you really want to be a great skier, you have to be a great athlete. So, you know, you may not be good in everything, but if you work hard and if you practice a lot, you'll become a better skier. Okay. And if you're not great at certain things, let's say you're skiing on a team and you're not good at moguls, well, you better hire somebody who's great at moguls. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, if you keep those elements in mind, I think that helps a lot. Yes. Women have um, you know, it, it, different characteristics that are good and bad. So, mm -hmm. in, in general, right? We're, I mean, there's definitely a lot that's carried on the having two X chromosomes. <laughs> that's a good thing, <laughs> I think. Um, so, one of the things we get with the extra X chromosome is um, more, uh, many women are more comfortable with kind of the emotional side of things and are able to. Um, feel situations as much as they can think them mm. and um, being able to feel a situation a lot of times makes you a really good leader because you have that emotional connection to your project and to your venture capitalists and to your team your company mm -hmm. um, so I think that's an element that can be very powerful mm -hmm. for a woman mm -hmm. Um, I think on the you mentioned sometimes women are not as assertive and they may not ask for what they want. Mm -hmm. Men are really comfortable. This is just in general. Mm -hmm. I have three sons and my husband. I have a female dog. <laughs> that said, that was a mandate. You know, it has to be a female dog to balance the household. Uh, but I watch my sons and my husband, and they are never afraid to ask for what they want. Yes. And I find even in myself and other women that we tend to be tentative. We tend to wait for somebody to ask us, mm. or we tend to not be as bold in mm. what we ask for. Mm. Be bold, ask for what you want, it, you know, ask the hard question. If you don't, you're not going to get what you ultimately desire. Yes, and um, some um, entrepreneurs have fed back to me that women often don't like to ask for money. And I said, well, that's yeah. like a really big stumbling <laughs> block because if you don't like to ask for, for money, you, you're not going to be able to that's go right. venture capital. That's right, yeah. So um, it's some sort of, oh, I should do it myself or exactly. some old pattern that, that we must have in yeah. Ingrained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask for money, it's okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs>